Hello and welcome back to the Antique Menswear channel. First of all, I want to thank everybody who watched my Charlie Chaplin style comedy video. It was a literally zero budget movie that I put together when I was a student and not many people have seen it. So thank you all for watching it and for your kind words. Another thing I want to thank you for is the positive reaction to my 1890s suit unboxing video. And seeing as you guys love the 1890s clothes so much, I thought I would show you another piece of 1890s clothes. And it's actually quite seasonal. It's finally started to turn cold. I mean, this has this has been one of the longest summers in Japan, I think for a long time. All of my Japanese friends and colleagues are saying that they've never experienced such a long summer. Where did the autumn go? And so it's finally not humid anymore. And the worst thing about the humidity is obviously it's too humid to wear any nice suits or old Edwardian clothes. And the other thing that's bad about humidity is that is humid and horrible and sticky. So finally we can wear some winter clothes and so I'm hoping to show you a bunch of really nice winter coats, jackets, trousers, waistcoats, everything that I have. And in today's video you're very lucky because I'm going to show you one of my favourite waistcoats in my collection. It's a... should I just show you it actually? I'll just take off this double-breasted jacket. It's actually a little bit harder than you think. These These buttons are very stiff so I don't want to force them. There we go, and we can actually talk about this jacket in another video because it's so wonderful. Could you just take that for me? Right, I forgot there's no one else here. Anyway, voila! <laughs> here is the waistcoat. It's a very beautiful knitted 1890s waistcoat. It has four double jetted pockets, and you can see it also features a hidden placket fastening. So the buttons are actually hidden underneath this front placket. And what that does is it keeps you warmer and it stops the wind from coming in through the buttonholes. This is such a lovely warm waistcoat. I don't know if you can see, but it's very, very thick. And the construction methods to make this are just amazing. Of course, we're going to go to some more detailed up close shots so that you can see all of that. It really is a beauty. All the detail that you can't see here is just incredible. Oh, before I forget, this collar is actually an original celluloid collar from the era and it was lovingly gifted to me by my friend Tom Van Hethoff. If you're not familiar with Tom, which you really should be, he is a tailor and a historical tailor and if you're looking for a historical suit, he is definitely the man to go to. So check out his Instagram page, he's a very good friend of mine. He didn't ask me to do the shout out, so I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> but definitely check out his Instagram and his website. He also gave me this lovely turndown collar too. It's good, it's good to have vintage friends. Celluloid used to be rubbery and very soft, but these have gone very hard over time. Anyway, on to the waistcoat. Right, so I'd better take this off and I can show you how it works and uh, I can actually reveal the hidden placket to you right here as I take it off ready to film the close-up. So here we go. You can see I'm unbuttoning one, two, three, four, five, six buttons down the front there and you can see them all revealed here. And here is the hidden placket on the inside of the waistcoat. And uh, each, each buttonhole has a small pocket and then it's simply tacked up here then another pocket and then it's tacked again and that that happens for every single buttonhole there right so i'll take this off and i will show you some close-ups here you can see the full waistcoat in all its glory and by the 1890s the british were calling what was once named the vest a waistcoat as it stopped at the waist you can see that the front panels are made out of a beautiful and tightly woven cream wool trimmed with a slightly lighter wool cream binding. The cream binding is still in good condition, though it does have some discoloration on the edges and one or two pin-sized moth holes. This is the area that gets the most wear, so that's to be expected. If we take a closer look at the weave, we can see that there are also spots of a shiny golden silk hand woven in there to create this beautiful pattern. It looks almost like snow, glimmering in the morning light, 
and really reminds me of Christmas. This is broken up by the pockets, which are double jetted with the same fabric that binds the fastening edges. They are thick and plumped out by an inner stuffing or rolled fabric. They are reinforced with some silk threads on either end to ensure they don't tear when being opened. Being the age that it is, this 130 year old waistcoat does have a few holes and tears. Some have been somewhat patched up, but I look forward to mending it in the future. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this waistcoat is its intricate lining that you can see in full here. The inner front panels are lined with a beautiful golden cream silk fabric. The left side, whilst it appears dirty, is the cleanest of the two. However, the bottom is stained. The middle part of the lining, actually the back of the waistcoat, is made of wool and helps to keep in the warm. It ends in this small slit, which allows for better movement. It too is reinforced by some silk thread at the very top of the triangle shape. You can see that the bottom edge is hand finished with tiny uneven stitches going along the bottom of the waistcoat. Interestingly, this handwork can be seen from the outside, but not on the inside. The right hand front panel is a lot dirtier than the left side. It is lined in exactly the same way, just with more staining and dirt. This could have been due to the way it was stored. The outer edge of the silk, where it meets the wool binding, has some intricately hand sewn cotton tape running around it to add strength and reinforce areas that would take a lot of wear. It is a tightly woven, strong cotton. It appears to be machine stitched to the binding on the outer edge, but hand sewn onto the silk. It is also completely hand sewn on the bottom edge. This edge would rub against the trouser waistband. This is the same on the left side where the placket is. If you're worried about your own wonky stitching, have a look at this. The edges of the placket are machine stitched to create the buttonhole pockets and that is accompanied by some hand stitches to hold it in place. The silk lining is then hand whip stitched to the placket. Let's take a look at these beautiful hand sewn buttonholes, each one totally unique. They are sewn with the same shiny silk thread. If we go to the neckline of the waistcoat, we can see where the wool lining, silk backing and knitted front panels join together. There's a lot of delicate handwork in this area. The back of the waistcoat is made of the same silk found on the inside lining of the front panels. The seam down the centre is entirely machine stitched. You can see some damage on the outer silk too, but this is to be expected. The cinch belt back is machine sewn onto the backing. The belt is also machine sewn, but only on the bottom edge, showing that it is one piece of fabric that's been folded over and sewn. It's finished with a small diamond shaped piece of silk to cover up the fold at the end. The end is pointed to make it easier to thread through the buckle. There is hand stitching on the seam that connects the buckle to the belt. These buckles are often rusted, but this one still looks lovely. It says make on the crossbar. The two prongs pierce the fabric to hold it in place. Here you can see the beautiful hand-finished bottom edge of the back piece. The armholes are finished in much the same way. Despite the discoloration and damage, it still looks very beautiful. Unfortunately, the biggest piece of damage is on the front shell on the right-hand side, where the weave has become loose. There's no way to fix this and make it look better, so I gently pressed the weave back in place and left it alone. From afar, however, it's almost undetectable. You can see that the mother of pearl buttons are beautifully carved. The holes are of course hand drilled, so each button is unique. This is in contrast to the thin, rough and unfinished mother of pearl buttons found on lower end garments. They're attached with the same golden silk as before.
I hope you enjoyed this deep look into one of my many antique garments. Please like, comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, because I've got lots more to show you. Thank you so much for watching.